Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time I'm delighted to be joined by John from Action Figure Grader. Now John's got a superb YouTube channel and I don't know anyone who's got their finger on the pulse with regards vintage Star Wars pricing better than this chap here. So uh, he's going to have a look through. We've chosen sort of 10 figures literally at random from the collection. Uh, these are ones that I've sort of put into nice GW acrylic cases but none of these are graded and I've, in a funny sort of way, been, I've never really wanted to know how much these figures are worth because I don't want to be tempted to sell them. Um, but the time has really come when I ought to know what's what and uh, perhaps consider getting some of my uh, perhaps more valuable pieces, at least officially graded. Um, so that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So we're going to go through, I'm going to join John on stream. Uh, we're going to go through all the pieces. He's already had a look at them and uh, he's going to be giving me a few surprises. I've got no idea what these are going to be worth. Um, a rough idea, obviously, I know, you know, uh, which ones are, are, are more valuable than others. But the actual nuts and bolts of it, honestly, I've got no idea. So uh, I think it's going to be quite interesting. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Hello and hi to John over in America. How are you today? All right. I'm doing great. I really appreciate you having me on the channel, Jules. I love your channel. It's it's such a wide range of different topics that you cover. And I, I, I never watch a video of yours where I don't learn something. It's it's just an awesome channel. So thank you for having me on. But no, no, it's absolutely my pleasure. And thank you for, for helping me out today. As you know, I pulled a few um yeah a bit of a mixture of, of figures from my collection a couple of juicy ones i'm sure you'll agree um and just some sort of more random ones ones that i've not got graded i don't have anything graded at all these are just ones that have been put into you know, acrylic cases so at least i can get them out and have them on display um but you know i've been watching you well pretty much since you started on youtube and um you're my way of at least having an idea of what stuff is making but I will be the first to admit that I'm really, really out of touch. Um, I used to follow the market back in the 90s, the, the early to mid 90s. Um, uh, when I sold the stuff, I had a shop. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but I used to um, uh, buy and sell old Star Wars stuff for a living. Um, right. But that was in the days when, I don't know, yeah, even the most, like the 12 backs were like maybe £100 each, $150 a pop. Um, and a jar was maybe, a plastic cape jar was maybe a grand. Wow. <laughs> if, if you them, you know. um, so those days are long long gone and the hobby has changed dramatically and i've seen other hobbies like coins and stamps and baseball cards go into the world of and comics go into the world of, of grading and um it was you know inevitable that toys and action figures went the same way um so really the purpose is give me an idea of what this stuff is potentially worth in its current state what i guess what it might be worth if i was to get it graded because i guess generally graded stuff goes for more because someone's had a look at it professionally and um it's like a like a guaranteed uh, it becomes a commodity doesn't it something that could be traded online um so people can get an idea of what it's worth and um maybe it'll give me an idea of which ones i should be sending off to the graders here um to get my best stuff looked after as best i can really um so we did choose a bit of a juicy one, which was uh, Yak Face as the uh, as the first one to have a have a go. I will try and get the reflection out of the way there. Well, so, you, um, you you did not waste any time, did you? You went right for the heavy hitter. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. I mean, I honestly don't. I'm not a huge fan of this figure at all. Um, I never had it as a kid. Um, I this particular one. It all goes back to I had one very very good find um in 1988 and uh, what it was there was a shop in in Plymouth where I live and uh a news agents and they were shutting down and um I was walking up to do my dad's banking that day we would take the the, the cash up to the bank and I was just walking by and I just sort of glanced through a closing down sale I thought well, that looks like some Star Wars and back then you could still find it in the shops it was being cleared out making way for you know, Transformers and Masters of the Universe, that sort of stuff was what was new. Um, and there was a wire, there was a wire bin there in, in the shop and I went in and it was filled with predominantly last 17 figures, tri-logos, um, 29p each, 29 pence each, which is what, 
you know, 40 cents or something. So I just These are what the dreams whole, are made of. These are what dreams are made of. Dream is true. <laughs> but don't forget back then, you couldn't give Star Wars away. Nobody wanted it. But I was into it. So I just took the whole, you know, basket up to the counter and said, I'll take them all. And she said, well, we haven't even got any carry bags. I said, stick them in a bin liner. I don't care. I'll take them. I'll take everything. So, you know, thankfully, I, what I had to do, I had to dip into the banking that my dad was going to be banking. I said, you wouldn't believe it. So I picked up as, basically as much as I could carry, went back to my dad's business, explained what's going on. I was all hyped up and excited. So you won't believe it. Okay, right. You just have to take it out your wages for that week. <laughs> and um, I went back, and, and they kept, kept over the next few weeks. They just kept bringing more and more stuff out. But that's where this one came from, and a few others that we'll look at later on. Um, 29p. Um, that, that, uh, in the UK, they had that 159 sticker on, of course. You know, um, that was how they were sold. Um, and it's actually a, a pretty tasty one, to be honest. Condition-wise, this one is not bad. So, for the benefit of the viewers, um, I did send. Um, you pictures of these outside of the cases they are highly reflective aren't they so i might just delicately take this one out because okay. they're not sealed see if that gives you a better a better look um so as you can see it's nice it's unpunched it's gorgeous absolutely yeah. gorgeous it's, it's a good it's a good one so i'm going to carefully slide it back so what do you think of that one then john well, let me tell you that uh, the the photos that you sent me did help quite a bit. And I want to preface this by saying that I am absolutely not an expert. I'm probably going to have – you're probably going to have some viewers that look at my estimates and think I'm crazy, either high or low. But yeah, uh, I have done quite a bit of, of kind of digging on prices. And this – you know, the, the, the yak face is a fairly easy one to value just because it's so plentiful. Um, but yeah. – Last 17 figures have completely skyrocketed in price over the last 12 to 18 months, just like everything else, but particularly last 17 figures, and particularly Luke's Stormtrooper and Yak Face. Anything mint on card, it's absolutely skyrocketed. Um, and so I looked at, you know, again, I looked at, at your photos, as you mentioned. I'm going to play guess the grade on all of these, and uh, yeah. I, think that, I think that this one would pretty easily score, um, you know, this... For grading, they look at three subscores. All, all the different grading companies do it. They look at the card. They look at the blister. They look at the figure. Um, I'm guessing that the card will get an 80. The blister is going to get a 75 just because of the minor damage uh, or dimpling, I should say, on the blister in the bottom. Figure get an 85. So I, I would be really shocked if this did not get an overall 80 near mint score. And there are plenty. There's plenty of recent data for, for something yeah. like this. One just got listed yesterday. That's max probably a seventy grade, and they want twenty three hundred dollars US for it. Um, I think that you're probably very, very conservatively looking at twenty five hundred dollars to three thousand dollars US, or eighteen hundred to twenty one hundred pounds, and that's that's pretty pretty conservative in the current environment. I think uh, for for something like that base, and it's it's just an incredible item. And one other comment that I'll make is that super picky. Super, like super picky collectors. They were they were absolutely mm -hmm. refused to have anything in their collection that has that gigantic one fifty nine price sticker. But yeah, um, it I seems like they're, they're, it's it's not as as um, a big of an issue to some collectors as well. But the, something no, like I mean I, it wouldn't bother me because I remember that's how they were in the shops. That's how they came from the factory. They were pre priced. Um, so you know it doesn't bother me. But I can understand they do exist without and. Um, uh, the ones without, I suppose, maybe are, are a bit more desirable. You know, maybe a 10 to 15 percent premium, that kind of thing. But uh, mm -hmm. give me a break. I that, that, like them with them, yeah, to be that, that item is absolutely good. amazing, Jules, and it, it's it's worth every penny of, of the price. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> really. What was next then on the hit list? Uh, the tri logo A wing was was when I kind of. A wing. Oh yeah. Okay. Here he is. Oh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. I, I never owned an A-wing before. Uh, I haven't got the toy, um, but I did have this figure. It was one of the ones I had loose, you know. Um, and yeah, I, I don't mind it. It's not bad. A um, little bit of wear. It's not perfect. It's not as good as the Yak. Um, the other great find I had when I started collecting the figures, um, 
I bought about 50 in a job lot. And it was a chap who'd written his car off. Um, this was in an early, this is the early 90s. So um, he had, he said, look, you can have all my carded figures. Um, there was a Luke X-Wing 21 back in there. And the rest were, were Jedi, all Jedi ones or tri-logos. It was 300 quid. Uh, so wow. I say, you know, four five hundred dollars for fifty figures. Um, <laughs> as I said, this is the time when you just yeah. couldn't. You know, people were giving this stuff away. He also had, and I for three hundred quid again, a set of the twelve inch dolls, um, but they were all loose, a loose mint set. So mm -hmm. I, I really wish he bought those as well. But I remember it was at an NEC toy show. I remember they're all just in like a a box. You know, taking them out to the car. It's like not thinking much of it at the time, you know, thinking, well, uh, this is going to help my collection, you know, trying to get them all carded, you know. Um, and um, this this came from that that particular lot, that one. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's not bad, is it? It's not bad. No, it's absolutely gorgeous. And, again, another last 17 figure that has definitely gone up quite a bit uh, in price. Mm -hmm. And I, I will mention that those price tags that, that we've seen on the first two items that we're yeah. talking about, as long as it's not peeled off or attempted to be peeled off and cause litho damage or lipping and things like that, the grading mm -hmm. companies don't care. It's, 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 it's not, it does not affect the scores at all. Um, mm -hmm. It might affect it aesthetically, but it doesn't affect the scores as long mm -hmm. as it hasn't been tampered with. So that's just something for viewers who maybe are not familiar with grading that uh, they'd like yeah. to know that. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. So I, I took a look at the photos and Wow, what an item. I think that it's got some minor creasing, as you just talked about in the bottom right-hand mm -hmm. corner. Just some very minor blemishes. I think the card score would be like a 75 or an 80. Uh, blister, again, another close score. I'm not really sure exactly how. It all depends on the grader, right? If the grader's yeah. had a good good night's sleep and he's having a good day, <laughs> he's going to give you a better score. I mean, it's it's that's just the nature of grading. It's a very um, subjective um thing since it's you know a particular grader but most grading companies including ukg where you're located they usually have three different graders kind of take a look at it so you've got three sets of eyes in theory um mm. coming up with with the value of these things but i think the blister score would be a 75 or an 80 the figure score would be an 85 you're going to be in that 75 range is my guess for the for the overall yeah. score and um uh, again this is another one that while it's a last 17 figure a lot of data. There's a lot of good data for this one. Um, one in very similar condition just sold on eBay in May. So last month for $480. Um, another one that was in worse condition sold for $400. I'm talking about U.S. dollars. Um, yeah. I think once graded, this this A wing is probably at a minimum worth $450 to $550 U.S. So you know, let's call that $320 to 400 pounds. And yeah. uh, you know, given that what the last 17 figures. I, what, what they've been doing in price just in the last, you know, three to five months, I could see this going up another 20% in like a month or two, depending on inventory. I mean, that's just how crazy the market is right now. I've seen loose, I've seen loose A wings sell, uh, for $300 to $350 us minimum pre grading. Yeah. So, um, so I, I think my number is probably low, but that gives you a pretty conservative idea of what it's worth. Well, fair enough. That's brilliant. Yeah. No, excellent. Excellent. What was next then? Okay, next, I'm going to warn you. I'm going to warn you, Jules. That this one's not going to be. It's not. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a little bit. But let's let's talk. Let's talk about the tri logo Leia Hall that you have. Okay. Yeah. No, that's all right. Because um, lovely figure, but like you say, um, it has got some faults. This one. Um, there was that. Did you see the little sort of T or writing under the logo? I do. You know, I never really noticed that until I started photographing them for you. So it's one of those things. Um, I love the card, you know, moody layer, I call it, you know. Um, it is what it is. It's been punched. It's, it's not as nice as it. But, yeah, that is a, is a big defect, isn't it? The, the, the little, like, T. looks like a T or something, doesn't it, you know? Um, well, I did think, because on book covers, Johnny book covers, I've been able to get that off with a bit, just a bit of water and a soft rubber. Mm -hmm. But I didn't attempt it on this because I don't want to, the last thing I want to do is like rub the card and make it worse. So I'm just going to leave it. And it's, it's how I got it. Um, and it's how I've had all these years. So I'm not over there, you know, I'm not going to cry any tears or anything, but obviously quite a detractor then from the value. Well, let me tell you that that tri logo Leia Hoff, whether it has 
that T on it or not on the front is an absolutely very, very difficult item to find, at least here for U.S. collectors. Uh, they come up very, very irregularly. And uh, I'm not sure if I've ever seen one for sale publicly, but I've seen a few on on Facebook. But uh, yeah. they, they command big dollars. Now, I want to talk about that T because I think this is something that um, some collectors will find interesting. Uh, it, it's precluded from receiving a grade with UKG or AFA because it does have handwriting on, on the front of the card. Any, anything mm -hmm. like ink touch-ups or any kind of handwriting, uh, it, you're, you're basically not, uh, the, the grading companies will not assign a value. Um, one of the U.S. graders will assign a, just a, a figure value for it. But um, now I've seen exceptions to that rule, though. I used to have uh, an FX7 tri-logo uh, that was graded by UKG. And the, on the back of those tri-logos, you know, there's a white blank box. And, it, and on that mm. one, I had a handwritten price tag. And, oh. they, and they still graded it. So I think that, you know, again, I'm only guessing because I'm not a, I'm not part of a grading company but my, my guess is that if it's a handwritten price tag um even on that back white box on the card that they'll grade it but if it's like any kind of random handwriting it probably precludes it oftentimes you'll see like the backs of of uh, vintage kenner and vintage tri logos where you know kids have checked off the box um yeah, of, the, of the figures they have i know for yeah. a fact that that automatically precludes it from grading um so i don't think this one would make sense to get graded um, because I don't, you know, it would just receive a no grade and yeah. what's called an NG. Yeah, 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 that's okay. But well, that's, that's exactly the sort of thing, you know, I, I, I wouldn't have known. So brilliant. But I, that, I want, I want to make an exception here, but <laughs> all that being said, everything that I just told you, yeah. it doesn't matter because it's still a mint on card Leia Hoff. And I, I think even with that handwriting on there, it would easily be worth 400 to $500 us. Um, it would be worth double that if it was uh, graded uh, and had a, uh, you know a high grade assigned to it. But um, I, I think very conservatively, even with the condition of sin, someone would would love to have that as part of their collection, just because it's so difficult to find her on that yeah. on that trial level. Just makes really nice, oh, it's, really, it's really nice. amazing condition. It's an amazing, amazing condition. So. It's amazing. That's one of the great things about the tri logo bubbles. They they've not yellowed. Um, I've got. You know, box loads of the Canon ones uh, for us to go through later on, and they're all yellowed. It's, right. uh, I think I think they're all yellowed. You know, um, it's such a shame, but it, they weren't yellow when I got them. It's happened over time, over the, the last thirty years, and they've they've not been out on display. They've been in boxes. You know, they've not well, been out. I I found I, I talked to a collector, and he told me what causes that. So so some of the later Return of the Jedi card backs, after about uh, the forty eight backs with uh, the knee and numb offer. Yeah. They moved over to adding a, a fire retardant chemical as part of the blister making process. And that fire retardant is what causes the, the yellowing over time. It's, it's almost unavoidable for any, uh, any Kenner uh, later yeah. return of the Jedi card back. So. I remember when, when we had the shot, we had a, or I had a whole case of Gamorrean guards. Um, I think it was, we had 112 Gamorrean guards. All brand wow. and, and they got all yellowed, every single one. Mm. Yeah, um, we were knocking them out at well, ten pound each. You know, it was fifteen, sixteen dollars <laughs> a pop, <laughs> literally mint. You know, so Crazy. when we get around to the more guy, I've still got one. I kept one myself, and Good. it's pristine, but with a yellow bubble. You know, it's one of them things. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what's next then? Okay, next on on the list, I had the. Now this is another one that is absolute fire with the Meccano twenty back Jawa. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Common, common at one point. This I kid you not. So when I got mine, this was at Chesant Toy Fair, which is fairly near London, just outside London. And the dealer had a whole box of them. It must have been he must have had twenty or thirty of them, fifteen quid each or even twelve quid each. It was a huge run. So I picked out the best one I could find, which was this one. This is the one I've kept. I love the French ones. I, I'd love to have more, but they're just so pricey. They I think. Are. The, the, the next one is the uh, Imperial Commander, the Death Squad Commander. That's the one I, I would get next. Um, I love them, though. I really love the French ones. They're, they're great. Um, got the blue snaggletooth on the back, which always makes me laugh, you know. Um, and the 12-inch figures, poopy. <laughs> <laughs> the poopy. But, um, yeah, I love them. But this is easily the most common of the French ones, isn't it, you know, to get? Yes. Um, 
It is. But quite nice condition, this one, isn't it? The bubble's all right. Um, tiny little, uh, like, dink in the corner, a little bit of wear in the corner, but generally all right, this one, I thought. Oh, it's incredible condition, and it's funny that you decided to, to show that one to me because I literally just bought one myself uh, last week. <laughs> and I can I can guarantee you that I paid a lot more than you did. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but as you talked about, um, the Meccano twenty back Jawa is is easily the most common. But mm-hmm. um, and it, you know even like a couple of years ago, you could pick one up for maybe two or three hundred bucks US. Those days are long gone. People are starting to recognize that even if it is um, uh, fairly numerous, and even now, uh, collectors yeah. are snapping them up and. What, the one I picked up is actually graded already by, by AFA. And what's yeah. unique about this one and probably ties into uh, something that you talked about um, is that this one is uncirculated graded. So in order to get an uncirculated graded item on a vintage, you know, uh, a vintage Star Wars figure, someone, mm-hmm. whoever submitted this one to the grading company had to have sent in a completely sealed case. So it's very likely that this comes back to that mm-hmm. find that you talked about. Didn't you? Did, yeah. I, I wonder if you want to talk more about that. Well, yeah, I mean, it was, I, I don't remember even the dealer who was, um, who was selling it, but um, I know later on we've got an Anakin Skywalker, and that, that one came from a find of 3,000 Anakins in oh. France. And um, the guy who found those, uh, he's still dealing today. Um, he used to be called Global Collectibles, a chap called Steve Chamberlain. He, this is back in the 90s. Um, he used to come down to the shop and we would have stuff off him. He went to Japan and I bought some stuff that he, he bought from Japan uh, off him. But he, in his before he was a dealer of toys, he used to be a rep for a stationery company. And he systematically went throughout Europe, town by town, city by city, checking every little toy and hobby shop for old toys. And this is back in the early 90s. And well, yeah, from about 1990. And he he went right throughout Europe and picked up stuff you just wouldn't believe. And on one of his trips to a wholesaler's, came across these 3,000 Anakins. They were a pound each in, in our money. So like a dollar fifty each. But he had to buy the, the lot. So there was this massive glut. And probably the same sort of thing happened with um, the, the Meccano Jawa. I mean, I don't know, but they obviously someone found a load. Um, I remember there was a great find in Bahrain, in you know in Arabia, Saudi Arabia, and um, they had all British palatoy stuff. And the guy was coming over to the British toy fairs, and he'd bring as much as he could get in his suitcases, basically, and hawking it round cases of this stuff to dealers. And um, it was in this warehouse in Bahrain, and the further back he went the older the toys were becoming. Oh, so by wow. the very, the last stuff he was turning up was like the Palatoy cantinas and things like that, literally cases of them. Um, and that was a magic, you know, 12 months or so where this guy was coming over to all the toy fairs and going back with thousands and thousands of pounds. And uh, I, I, that turned up lots of stuff, you know. I, I know Jim Stevenson, Jim, I don't know if you remember, Jim, Mr. Star Wars Stevenson, sadly departed now, but he would constantly have cases of the last um jedi assortment because they, they were all coming from bahrain that mint absolutely mint and he had each assortment was brilliant it was like 32 different figures with maybe a couple of the more popular ones in there as well doubled up um and so stuff was around and they, these were the days in the 90s you could find this stuff and uh, that's definitely where that jawa came from but you know beyond that i don't know where it came from you know well, I, I took a really close look at that Jawa, and I, I can tell you that it's probably in better condition than mine. Um, just and, and mine's uncirculated, so it, it's case fresh. Um, yeah. you, you've got a couple of minor nicks here and there, but um, the way that these were packaged, a lot of the times, is they were uh, vacuum wrapped with with like it's almost like saran wrap that they just would wrap around twenty of them and then slap them yeah. in a box. So they they tended to get a little bit more wear than um, mm. you know even you know, Kenner, Kenner items. So yeah, again, the data is pretty, pretty common. And I I think that you'd probably get about the same score that mine got of UKG 80. Um, your, your card score is, is, is probably your, 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 the card back is, is probably in a little bit better condition than mine. And I think very comfortably that this Jawa is worth anywhere from 600 to $700 us. So 425 to 500 pounds. 
I, I, I mean, it, it, it could go it could go even higher than that, believe it or not. I mean, the, the prices mm-hmm. on those are rising so steadily, even though they're numerous, people just want to have a chance at owning this. Is, you know, this would be the only square card Meccano that I'll own, ever own because the prices for the rest of them have just gotten so crazy. So really? um, yeah. it's a beautiful it item. Is, though. It's lovely to have one. It is lovely to have just an example. Um, and, and I love the French stuff. I've got some other French stuff in my collection of quite a few books. Um, I've got a really nice, um, it's like a, a hand cranking projector for the first film. You put a cartridge in. I've seen those. Yes. Really, really nice. it's, 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 a, it's a cork. It's one of my favorite pieces. Uh, but I, I really like the French stuff. It's great. Yeah. I, you know, I really do. And being, you know, they're just over the water. You know, um, I, I, when we had the shop, we had, People who are who've got collector shops in Brittany and East and Paris would come over to us often. They became friends. They're still friends today, um, and uh, uh, yeah, they would bring stuff over all the time and take stuff back with them. You know, it were good, <laughs> good days collecting back then. Um, you could find anything, yeah, and you didn't, never knew what was around the corner. It was it was it was a brilliant time to collect Star Wars because uh, it was the early days of the hobby. People were just starting to to start collecting it again. And I, I loved it. I, I never really went off it, to be honest. You know, I, fr- right from the, when the first film came out and buying those original first 12, you know, I remember it vividly, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's brilliant. And I never really went off it ever, not once, mm-hmm. you know, since, since the day it came out. I've always collected Star Wars. So um, good stuff. What's next then? Okay, well, uh, the next, I, I wanted to talk about some of your signed items. Um, the first one being oh, yeah. Imperial Commander. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now I know sign stuff is very much an acquired taste, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's a it's a great uh, exactly my my talking notes is that some collectors really do not like to collect autographed vintage items. They they prefer to have their mm. autographs on you know modern card backs, things like that, and keep the yeah. vintage you know un, un, untouched and unsigned and things like that. But I, mm. at the same time, I know many collectors, like especially in the Facebook autograph groups, where they would pay absolute, you know, top dollar for for some some signed vintage stuff. So this one, of course, I, I, I at least got a photo of him signing it, which is something, and holding it up, which uh, adds a little bit to it. Um, I so wish I'd done that with so many other things, you know, um, that I've had signed over the years. I always do it nowadays, but back then it wasn't something I regularly did, you know. Um, I think somewhere I've got I've got lots signed by Kenny Baker, um, and I've got some photos of him signing it, but not the same way as Julian Glover holding this figure up, which is is brilliant. And I would always do that going forward, you know. Um, but I like it. I, I you know I just like getting signatures on stuff, you know. Um, I always remember someone had um, a, a '60s Lost in Space Robbie the Robot, right? And around the rim of Robbie, he got all the cast to sign it. Wow. It was just fantastic. And when they're all around still, you know, there's only one left. Billy Mummy is the only one left. And how fantastic was that? You know, um, that's the sort of thing I think should be in a museum. You know, I understand from an aesthetics point of view, it's not quite the thing, but they, people do it on comics all the time, don't they? You know, um, I, I don't know. For me, I love it. I love science stuff like that. It makes me it too. Much unique. Me too. Yeah, uh, above. Uh, Let's see. Above me, right here, I've got a bunch mm-hmm. of different signed uh, uh, Power of the Force too. I've got some signed vintage collection, yeah. but I don't own any uh, signed vintage Kenner stuff. But that that is an awesome item. And one thing that uh, a lot of collectors mm-hmm. do is, especially when you have the photo like you do of Julian Glover, is to send it in to one of the grading companies, and then they'll include the photo of him signing or holding it up along with the item. Um, and yeah. I know that UKG often, uh, or does definitely does uh, autograph authentication. So, um, mm-hmm. it's a much yeah. easier process with them than some of the other grading companies. Um, some of them, like mm-hmm. the one I use mm-hmm. here in the U S they, um, they rely on an outside service. So there's a number of services that will authenticate the autograph and James Spence authentication back get things like that. So, um, but that, that to me is a really cool item. I love seeing Julian mm-hmm. Glover holding it up and, uh, I've got a lot of fond memories of, of him in the Star Wars films as well as in Indiana Jones. So um, yeah. I, I think that this item, it, it's it, again, it would be an acquired taste. I think uh, it's got some moderate to heavy creasing on the card back, which probably drops the overall score down to about a, a yellowed yeah. 70 or 75. But I think very comfortably someone, 
I mean, I know I can I can already tell you what I would pay for it. I, I would pay easily two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars U.S. or about yeah. one hundred and eighty to two fifty uh, in pounds um, for for something like that. But again, you might get a little higher, you might get a little lower. It just mm -hmm. depends on on on, mm -hmm. on that. But I, I think it's an awesome awesome item, and having that photo is is really special. I think to to, to have yeah, next to it. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah. Um. So we got another signed one. Are we going to do that one now? I think we need to talk about that one because that one will probably dr uh, drop a few jaws when they see that one. Hmm. So the signed Jeremy Bullock. Uh, where are we? Signed Boba Fett. Amazing. Now I've got loads signed by him. Uh, loads of merchandise. This is the only figure I've got, but I have got. Um, I I've got. I've got some Sigma ceramic stuff. I, I must have his signature on four or five different things, I would think, you know. Um, and, you know, he was around. He did the, the circuit. Like a lot of the, um, the, the the men behind the masks, they were British actors because um, they were the original trilogy filmed in the UK. Um, and they didn't do a lot else, you know. They weren't doing a lot beyond that. And it was a way to keep them, you know, get, get an income. So they were around and you pay... You pay him ten pound or something like that to sign anything, and he would, you know. But I think with Jeremy Bullock, uh, he was such a nice chap with it. I mean, he really was such a nice, nice, gentle soul, um, and he really take the time to make sure that his signature was absolutely perfect. He had the he best penmanship of any of any autograph I've ever seen. <laughs> that is what I was trying to get at. Yeah, he really was careful. Um, he wouldn't just rush it, you know, he, and that was, uh, fans appreciated that, you know, and he'd always have time, he'd take photos with you, um, just incredible guy, you know, um, and yeah, this is one of my favourite pieces, I mean, I know, it, it was funny, but back in the 90s, we had a constant supply of this figure, it was not rare, I mean, we had stacks and stacks of them, um, because they were coming over through the Bahrain connection, um, and we had people who, who who could get them for us. Um, and we were knocking them out. This is in the 90s, about 80 to 100 pound a pop. Um, and once, once a week, we'd get another one out of the box. You know, we had a few of them in stock. It was like a stock item. But this is the only one. This is the best one I kept. It's unpunched, but the bubble's yellowed, like so many um, of the Kenners. Over time, the bubble's yellowed, but it didn't used to be like that. Um, but I certainly love the signature. And um, what a display piece. It's just the business, isn't it, that one? It's it really absolutely it? incredible, and I've got a couple of points on this one. Number one, mm -hmm. we have to talk about the Mandalorian. Uh, the, the Mandalorian has drawn in so many new and casual collectors, and yeah. what what it's led to is those casual collectors who maybe are uh, have deep deep pockets. The first thing they're going after is a vintage Boba Fett mint on card, mm -hmm. and what I've seen over the last twelve months has been absolutely incredible. I went from uh, maybe I can pull pull it off this year, uh, John, and 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 go ahead and get a, a mint on card Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. Well, after you know, it's really I'd say the last twelve to fifteen months, and that that card has has easily gone up. I'd say double. Um, it's it's just mm -hmm. the the demand from casual collectors has driven that uh, to uh, pretty otherworldly prices. Um, yeah. The other the other comment I'll make is what I call the Boba Fett tax. And it, it, uh, there, you'll probably get some chuckles. You'll probably get some chuckles from some longtime vintage collectors because it's it's kind of a, a common uh, phrase in the different Facebook groups. But mm -hmm. anything Boba Fett related, and uh, whether it's vintage or modern, you can automatically add the Boba Fett tax to it. So uh, anywhere from twenty to fifty percent, sometimes even more than that. Um, right. So mm -hmm. now Jeremy Bullock is, as you mentioned, is a is a very prolific signer. I've got a number of different signed items from him. But I, I think for something like this, once it's authenticated and, and graded, I, th I think that way all day long, that thing would grade uh, for a yellowed 80 overall score, potentially an 85. And, um, you know, one thing we haven't talked about, Jules, is that for some of these really high-end items, um, like the Yak Face or this Boba Fett or the last one we're going to talk about today, the, the difference in price from an 80 to an 85 or from an 85 to a 75 is substantial. So, so once graded, you can really see, it's just like in comic books, right? Um, a 9.8 mm. grade versus a 9.6 grade can sometimes be 200, 300% if it's a very rare comic. Um, so keep that in mind is that, you know, the prices can fluctuate quite a bit based on uh, what the final overall score is. But I, I think easily 
I would be really hard pressed to, to, to believe that someone would not pay, I call it 1800 to 2100 pounds or 2500 wow. to, to 3000 US for, for that item once yeah. it's, you know, once the autograph's authenticated. It's just such a high demand item and, uh, and having everything authenticated, high grade, oof, it would sell like hotcakes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a shock, that one. Yeah. It could be higher than it's that, too, Jules. Good. That's the crazy thing. That, that might be a low, a low estimate. <laughs> no. Yeah, I was not expecting that. Um, for a figure, that particular one, I just, yeah, I know there's the demand is there. And, um, well, I love the Mandalorian. In fact, I'm wearing my Mandalorian t shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, a great, great show. But that, yeah, that's a surprise. Blimey. Okay. It's a big number. It's well, a big number. Yeah, and, uh, you'd have to pry it out of my cold, dead hands to sell it. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't doubt it. Um, <laughs> the, the next one. I, I want to talk about the next one now. The next one is. I'm mm. hoping one day, one day in the distant future, Jules. I hope that one day mm. that this item is in my collection, and that's your Palatoy 45 back cloud car pilot. Oh yeah. I used to have a thing about the cloud car pilot. I, in fact, I, I do almost, have a thing. You can see right here. I've got a thing behind me going on. <laughs> you could have, I thought you had this. I, no, I, I don't have the. I don't have the palatoy. I don't have the palatoy. Right, right. That one um, is drill worthy. <laughs> an, an absolutely <laughs> amazing item. Yeah, it has got that sticker removal mark though, hasn't it? It looks like it in the top left corner. It's very faint. Very it's it's very faint. Rub. Just yeah. a little bit of rub. It's not terrible. Um, no. Now tell us about how you got this one. This I got later on. It was it was at a toy fair, and um, I don't believe I had it in any form at all. So I got this one and the Tie Fighter Pilot both on Empire cards at the same time. Uh, Forty five pound that one cost me. I, I remember paying that for it. So yeah. that was like a, that, for me that was dear. That was a collector's price, you know? <laughs> but that's what they were going for at the time. So yeah, forty five pound. Um, and I thought, yeah, lovely. Because at that point, almost all the figures that I owned, bar a couple, were all tri-logos or uh, Jedi cards. So even that's really what it is today. I haven't got many earlier than that. Um, maybe we'll talk about it another time. But I have let, um, I've let a couple of Empire ones go because they were either low grade or it was I couldn't turn the money down. I wanted to put it into something else. And I let a couple of Japanese 12 backs go, uh, Star Wars 12 back, um, yeah. which both of them had faults. So I, it wasn't the end of the world to get rid of them. Um, but, you know, that's maybe a story for another day. But this one, yeah, 45, 45 pound I paid for that. And uh, yeah, very pleased with that one. No idea what it's worth. Not a clue, I'm afraid. Well, I can already tell you that this is one of my favorites of everything we're looking at today. Um, right. there, yeah. there are. Uh, uh, surprisingly a large number of focus collectors for the cloud car pilot and i consider mm. myself a starter you know i've got three of them mint on card but nothing uh yeah. nothing foreign all of mine are, are kenner kenner products um but i can also tell you that this one is definitely a legitimate uh, item as as we you've probably talked about in the past on your channel but you know there's the toy tony mm. scandal from i don't know oh, what it was 2013 yeah. and there there are mm. some palatoy card backs as well as some German General Mills card backs, there are forty-five backs that are mm. uh, are known to be Toy Tony uh, fakes, yeah, um, wish, yeah. or yeah, you know, they're all real items, but they were assembled after the fact, mm. not by the factory. But this one is not one of those because this is a uh, a legitimate Palatoy and not on the Toy Tony list. And yeah, the the other thing that that makes this one so desirable, at least to me, um, is that it's the debut card. It's the forty-five back. Uh, debut mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. So I, I can already mm -hmm. tell you that I, I showed this to a, a couple of other collectors, the photos that you sent me, um, just in this instance, mm -hmm. but they probably would be worth. I had my number in mind, and we both came up with about the same number. Um, oh. we, we thought that easily that someone like me or my friend uh, Chris, we would we would overpay for this one just because we are focused collectors. And I think that that would be the case for something like this. Easily six hundred dollars uh, U.S. or about four hundred and twenty-five pounds, probably even higher. To be honest with you, um, it, it's just very, very difficult to find that debut card back uh, for uh, the Cloud Car Pilot on the on the foreign you know Palatoy card back. And uh, wow, what an awesome item! It's it would it would probably grade out at around an, an eighty uh, yeah. with uh, just given that minor card blemish. But 
I can tell you I that. Do, I always love the figure. Um, it's gorgeous. I have got a cloud car as well. Not not quite as many. Do you collect the cloud car itself? I haven't yeah, gotten any yet. I've, I've, I've bid on a few. I've bid on a few sealed box examples, and I, I've always just gotten sniped last second. So. Yeah, I haven't got a sealed one, but um, yeah, I've only got I, I've got a handful of like sealed mini rigs and a few ships, but um, most of them are are open. There were just ones I found out in the wild back in the day. Um, but the cloud car I've got, and it's it's great. Um, right, so we got number number seven. No, number eight. Which is the boss, yeah? That Trilogo boss Bosque. is gorgeous. I, one of my favorite characters, and one I have in my collection as well. I've got one behind me here. So, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Don't remember where I got this one actually. Here's mine. Oh, uh, they've got snap, snap. Look at that. We got <laughs> twinsies. We got twinsies, Jules. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it is a great figure. I always think of um, Tim over at Boss Bounty, but I'm sure he's got one of these by now. He, he doesn't. He doesn't. He, he's looking for one. He can't find one yet. So. Oh no! Oh no! Well, this <laughs> one's um, this one has to stay firmly in the collection for now. I'm afraid, um, <laughs> but it's not. I don't think it's too bad condition. Unpunched. Um, a, a, yeah, a pretty nice bubble. I mean, you know, back in the day, it would have had a. A C nine, do you remember that? Absolutely, this is absolutely a C nine in my in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what's are, are these around then? Are they? You can you can pick these up. Well, I want to talk about this one because this was one that is surprisingly difficult to find. Um, oh, you, you, you do you do see them out there, but they're very very hard to find in high grade condition for whatever reason. I know one collector; mm. he just posted last week. He's he showed his tri logo collection. He's got every every one of them, except for General Maydean and a mint Bosk. So it's 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 one of those strange ones that that just doesn't turn up very often in very high grade. And I can tell you that from the example that I got, I bought, I paid quite mm -hmm. a bit of money for it because I knew that it's it's just it's one of those ones that's hard to find. And your example is pristine. Uh, I looked at the photos very mm -hmm. closely and. I would be really surprised if you did not get an overall 85 grade, which is a near mint plus score for, uh, right. for that boss. Just, just gorgeous. And uh, I think that conservatively, very conservatively, that you could probably get $600 US for that. Um, so 425 to 525 pounds. And for the right buyer, it's probably even higher than that. It's, it's just one of those difficult, strangely difficult ones to, to locate in, in very high grade. So interesting, um, yeah. Interesting. I I am denied about trying to put a tri logo set together. Um and I you know, I know Maydean's gonna be the tough one. And Jawa. I Jawa De Death Star oh, Droid. Yeah. Those are kind of the uh, three big 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 tough ones to find. I can't remember my Death Star Droid if I've got Tri Logo or not. Can't remember. But I did let a few go. Um it was just before I started getting back into it again, I was collecting original Xbox stuff. Um, so I let a small, uh, about five figures go from my collection. Um, and I got what I thought at the time was a very good price. And it did include a Tri-Lego Biker Scout, Tri-Lego Yoda, uh, Snaggletooth. I've got the Yoda right here behind you here. Let's see. Right? Yeah, that's, and, and I do regret it. Yeah, it was one of them. Yeah, it was one of them. Um, I do sort of regret it. But, you know, I got, good, I got a fair price for it at the time. So I am not complaining at all. Um, but it does mean after for years, decades, having, a f having at least one of every figure on a card, I now no longer have a full set. Um, uh, a couple of the, I got rid of like an Empire Lando because the, the bubble was so yellowed. I didn't I just didn't want it in my collection. I get rid of it. And a Rebel Commander as well. I got just got rid of it and got a much better one. Um, so in a funny sort of way, I wouldn't mind getting those back now. Um, and seeing just how short I am for a tri logo set, not that many, I don't think, because I, I no. like, you know. I've, yeah, so I've watched a number of your videos, and your tri logo collection is very close to complete. It's 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 an absolute. It, yeah, um, and I think the ones that I got rid of wouldn't be a fortune to get back. You know, a Yoda, a Biker Scout, a, a Snaggletooth isn't going to be the end of the world to get those back. Um, but then a Maydean, I may never own. You know, and you know, it's General Maydean. General I Maydean and Jawa, oh, yes, yeah. big, big money. Jawa, yeah. Five figures, five figures easily for, for those. Um, I would say, yeah, um, yeah that's a it's a bit beyond me now. Yeah, I would think I wouldn't what, want to invest that with the cheaper well, ones. Maybe well, one other item, one other thing that I haven't talked about yet that I do want to mention mm. during the stream is 
that if you decide to get any of these tri logos graded, because there uh, is so much play with the figure inside the blisters, uh, particularly yeah. on the, the yak face and one mm -hmm. we're going to talk about next, um, I would encourage you to get what's called blister support. And I'm going to show you an example of that where this Yoda has kind of a, a, an acrylic support system around the blister. And it just adds yeah. kind of another layer of protection for, for those tri logos. They're just such fragile mm -hmm. blisters that during yeah. shipping, uh, oftentimes um, I, I've had a number of friends who have, who have bought an, a, an ungraded tri logo. And then during shipping, the figure launches like a torpedo out of those blisters and just shatters everything. So um, if, if you decide to grade any of these, I would encourage you to, to pay a little bit extra with UKG to get that blister support. Um, yeah, but it, mind. So, some people, some people say it, it detracts from the aesthetics of it. So, it, you know, it depends. I've got some that have this and some that don't have that mm -hmm. support, but I think for me, um, better safe than sorry, so to speak. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. um, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Next, next on the list, I had your tri logo Anakin. Uh, yes. Yeah. So one, one of the 3000. Um, that was <laughs> they're, they're yeah, literally, they, they were costing it, it cost Steve a pound each, but um, this one, um, you know, I don't know, I think he was knocking them out to us at 10 to 15 pounds each, and we were selling them in the shop at about 25 30. So, I mean, this one's not bad, um, yeah, a little bit of edge wear. I mean, chances are, it, it, you know, I, I probably had real minters through my hands, but um. I may have kept it because it had the sticker on. I think about half did and half didn't. So maybe some of them were due to go to the UK. The rest of them were mainland Europe. Um, but I don't know for sure. But it's all right. He's okay. Yeah, Anakin. It is what it is. You know. It's it's a cool uh, it's it's a cool last seventeen figure. So it's always going to be, you know, s some demand there. And the uh, they are very common. So so you do see those for sale very regularly. I think yours yeah. is probably like an overall eighty score. Um, based on the yeah. photos I looked at, and um, you know, again, there's going to be some collectors that that don't like that sticker, but I, I don't mind them personally. I think it just kind of adds mm -hmm. a, a a nice bit of history when you see those stickers and and how it, how inexpensive they used to be. Um, yeah, and yeah, and so that one that that was another one where I was able to find a lot of data for yeah um, for for past sales and and very recent sales, and I think that you're probably looking at around three hundred and fifty to four hundred twenty five dollars US or 250 to, to 300 pounds for that one. Um, yeah. Again, that might be a, a little bit low, just given that it's a last 17 figure, but I think that's that's pretty close to, to the market value yeah. for that one. But a, a really nice, yeah. another, a, another last 17. So you've got a nice a nice run going mm. of those, and they're very they're going up in value every day. Yeah, I, th I, th I think I must have them all on Trilogo, except um, Pat Blue and Luma. Trying to remember, I can't remember. Romba, I think I've got on a tri logo. I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I mean, honestly, they're just stored in boxes. So. Well, I remember seeing your your tri logo Luke Stormtrooper, and wow, that that was another one that we, maybe we'll have to talk about that one at a later date because I I'd love that one. That was really nice. Um, yeah. I, although I remember it's not the greatest condition that one. I don't know if if, that, if it's that one or if, it might be my hand carbonite. I don't know, one or the other. But I think both of those came from the twenty nine P find, you know, from back in Muldoonies. Both of those ones. Um, so I can't really complain, really. No, I, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> inflation, in, inflation is is definitely hit on those items. <laughs> right. Fair enough. Uh, oh dear. Uh, well, I'm going to save some stories, but there, there are other stories. But one of the one, the only other one with the Anakin. So when he found all these figures, years, a few years later, obviously he still had hundreds and hundreds of them, cases and cases of them. But he had his shop by this point. This is the chap who found them, and um, I always remember he would put a box back once a month, full of stuff to be opened in twenty years' time. Uh, like and it would be he just fill it with collectible stuff that he had to hand and in every single box he put one or two Anakins in so uh, but this was back in the 90s so I imagine he's already opened those boxes now and uh, the stuff okay. in it's probably appreciated quite nicely you know but I thought that was a really good idea it's something that he had loads of you know put a few to one side um, right just one left the last one. one one left and this is this is just an incredible item 
Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, he's a goodie. This is a 12 pack B power toy. Yeah. Um, definitely the one I would have had as a kid, this one. Um, uh, the first figure I ever bought was Chewbacca. I seem to recall. Out of all the original 12, it was Chewie was my first one. But I had them all. I had all, all 12 and the 21, every single one. Um, wow. And it's a beauty. I mean, it, it's it, it's being punched. It's it's not unpunched. But the bubble is pristine on it. The card is, is mint. Uh, everything about it is just as good as you're going to get, I think, you know, on this one. Um, when I saw the photos... Jules, when I saw the photos of this, I, I was just blown away at that condition. It was like a time capsule. Uh, yeah. I mean, it looks absolutely uh, factory fresh. And uh, it's a 12 back B. So obviously, uh, for those that maybe are watching who don't have a history on Star Wars figures, uh, the, there's the 12 A, B, and Cs. And so this would be kind of like the, the, the second most difficult to find behind the 12 A. But having that Palatoy logo on the front and, and just the condition it's in, it's, it's truly a remarkable masterpiece of an item. And uh, yeah. uh, I, I, I did quite a bit of research on this one because I wanted to make sure I was fairly accurate. I looked at Vectus closed sales. I looked at Hake's auctions, which is here in the U.S., their closed sales. Um, and I actually did reach out to a number of different collectors uh, on this one to get a better wow. sense of value. And me personally, I mean, this is just me speaking personally. I was actually surprised at the number. I thought it would be quite a bit higher than this, but it's still, I mean, don't get me wrong. This is a 12 back B Palatoid R2D2. Mm. It's, it's a super desirable item. Um, there was one that was uh, an AFA 80 overall score. And if you remember earlier in, uh, during this discussion, I mentioned how the values of these can vary so much based on the overall score. So, uh, and, a 75 grade would go for quite a bit less than an 80 grade An 80 grade mm -hmm. goes quite a bit less for an 85 grade. So I, I, me yeah. personally, I don't see how this could possibly get less than a UKG 85 for the overall score. It's just uh, an amazing condition. Now let's play hypothetical here. Let's say it actually got a UKG 90 to go from a UKG 85 for a 12 back to a UKG 90. You're probably talking a difference of double in terms of price. So keep all that in mind with, with my uh, with my estimates here. But I think conservatively, um, you're you're talking twenty five hundred dollars to three thousand dollars US. And yes. uh, again, one hundred percent score dependent. But you know, that that rounds out to about eighteen hundred to twenty one hundred pounds. Um, so a, a, a truly remarkable item. And again, uh, if you decide to get that one graded, that's one I would consider blister support on. And if you do, if you did manage to pull off a ninety with UKG, you're looking at a at a very very uh, high end collectible that is very desirable among collectors. So, mm -hmm. definitely gonna get that one graded. <laughs> it's a, it's an incredible item. It really is, Joel. It's a beauty, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's a very nice one. Um, I really like it. It's so nice. I mean, I can remember buying it pretty much. I think as a kid, I would have been about seven when that one came out. Seven or eight years old. And uh, yes, it's a lovely one. It certainly is a lovely one. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, thank you. So the 10 figures we've looked at, did you top them all up? Approximately? I, I did not. I did not. I was, I was going to let you surprise, surprise viewers when you. Well, I, I haven't been making notes. So what I'll do um, on the screen when I edit this, I'll put final total in sort of dollars and pounds approximately um, just as a running total because. I've got about another 90 figures to go. So I think Incredible. approximately, yeah. And we could always do some ships and stuff like that as well. Mix it up a bit. Sure. Maybe some places, if you fancy, you know. Absolutely. Are you kidding? <laughs> I, I, I enjoy this kind of – this is great. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, well, I because I mean, I'm so out of touch, and this is this is a really good snapshot of what the, what the stuff's going for. And hopefully – well, I hope it doesn't put people off collecting, you know, because, you know – you have to collect within your means. I understand that, but um, I don't know. You might not want that R2 because it's, you know, so much, but there's always a cheaper version you could get, isn't there? You know, if you just want the characters. Um, it's like I, when people say, I want to start collecting the figures, I say, well, look, try not to look too hard at the 
the, the last few, which are going to be expensive, you can get a really nice collection of the more common ones fairly cheaply, but just make sure you buy as good as you can afford. Um, I think collecting Star Wars can be for all pockets. Um, uh, I think but, one, one thing that, that a lot of people don't realize with these vintage Star Wars figures, even mm-hmm. mint on card, during the heyday when Star Wars was at its height of popularity, let's call it 1980 to 1984, 1985, somewhere in there. Kenner, just just the Kenner factories, they were pumping out roughly 3 million of these every year. So it, yeah. it's not like these are particular, not all of them. There, there are certainly exceptions. There, there's lots of rarities. I would, I would classify that, um, that R2 as, as one that is particularly rare, just given the condition. But mm. Uh, mm. For, for, for newer collectors out there, uh, you know, you got to keep that in mind is that most of them are not very scarce. You, you, can, you can readily find them depending on condition and, and start a really nice beginner collection for not, not too much money and uh, if, with patience. That's, that's the key I always yeah. preach on my it's channel is, is patience. So. Yeah. And, and go for the long term. Collect what you love. You might want to just be a focus collector and just collect the one figure. Um, there's a few times I've thought about it. The Cloud Cup Pilot was one, two, one B I thought about, and the Death Squad Commander. And I, I did actually have a double of the Death Squad Commander, so I kept the Jedi one. But I sold the Empire 45 back Palatoy um, to a, a, a focus collector. So I know it's gone to a good home, and I know he's he's really going to love it. But it was there was like no recorded sales. It's super super rare. Um, and it went for, I you know, sort of for a lot of, uh, twelve hundred quid I got for that one. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I was happy to let it go um, because I knew I wasn't going to end up being a focus collector for that one. And I had one on a Jedi card, so it wasn't like I didn't have one. Um, and I wanted to put the money into uh, some rare Xbox games, which is exactly what I did, you know. So um, it swings and roundabouts. But on the whole, collect what you love and just collect for the long term. And most of this stuff that you're seeing here, I got decades ago, you know, literally when it was still in the shops um, and a few bits in the 90s when I was you know, filling in the gaps in my collection. Um, for a long time, even from the mid 90s, I tried to get one or two bits a year to add to it um, just to sort of keep the collection going. But because, you know, children came along and, you know, <laughs> got married and suddenly I didn't have the space to put it. I used to have a whole room devoted to the collection. I don't at the, anymore. Um, I've just got to grab what space I've got. So I'm not in a mad hurry to buy more stuff, but I'm quite tempted to try and finish the Tri Logo run without the Jow and Nadine, you know. Um, so I might try and get some of those figures back just to say I've got them again, you know. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Well, look, mm. we better wrap up. Um, thank you very, very much for coming on today, John. My pleasure. My pleasure. We'll do the same again soon. Um, and I hope Love to. anyone watching this in my channel. If you've never gone over to see John's action figure grader, it's full of fascinating information. And uh, I particularly like your eBay sales analysis. I've just started doing one of those on the rare paperbacks and uh, it's gone down really well. And I can see the attraction. Um, And I'm certainly going to be watching a lot more of those from yourself, John, because I'm sort of back in the game now. I'm getting a feel for what stuff's going for. And um, it's a lot of fun. And I think sometimes it can be all about the numbers. You've got to remember we're having fun. It's a hobby and we want to get, get some fun out of it as well which is you know what we like that's the most important part of it (laughs) absolutely brilliant well thank you very much again thank you for watching today and i shall see you again very soon bye bye everyone thank you so much